Hi Dragon, it's Helen and I'm just going to do a demonstration for you about the topic we spoke about on Friday. So uh, now I've loaded um, the with Project Open I loaded Tutorial A2 something similar to you show, what you showed me. Uh, I've done a compute and I've done a build and so you can see it in 3D now. What you were asking is about getting um, the CSV data points from the tops of cells and having them available to take to ModFlow. So that's fantastic and I'll show you that now. I'm just going to do something from the 3D Geology menu. Select it with your left mouse and right click and you say that you want to create a 3D grid with physical properties. And then you get to choose a cell size. So this is the block model that you're going to make, um, otherwise known as a Voxet. Uh, so I'm just going to choose, say, fixed at 300 meters. Um, that will be 300 in every direction, X, Y, and Z. That gets completed quite quickly. So now we have uh, this new parent mesh with, with the field which is an empty one. I'm going to now hide the 3D geology model so I'm just going to go to the, this one here and uh, hide it so we can see and have a look at what we've got. Um, you also need to do another thing which is select the grids and mesh and do a right click, ah oh, sorry, the one below, model grid properties, this new parent mesh, you need to add the current model field. What that means is make geology go into the new uh, mesh that you created. And now it does have a daughter. When I say a daughter you can you can put lots and lots of uh, different attributes under the one parent mesh now. So the one that we have got and I'll touch on it, right click, visualize manager, through view in 3D, OK. And now you can see you've got the block model that's a real 3D grid, uh, so we can uh, we can not we can choose not to see the air, for example, um, and uh, what that represents is if you go up to Geology Stratigraphic Pile Visualize, um, you'll notice the pile here with the possibility to say the current model pile. So what is the current model? And you see it's got numbers. So everywhere you've got pink basement. Um, rather than storing this as an attribute in color, it stores it as an attribute in number because that's more mathematical. Um, so basement is one, lower cover is two and so on. Um, uh, zero is air, so that can be visualized as a grid. If I just right click and say edit clips and colors, you'll realize that we, we have a grid and we have um, a histogram distribution of, of the uh, frequency of each unit. So of course um, the blue one has the most volume and it's got the most frequency. It's number two. So air is, is always allocated to, number, to zero, number zero. And then you go down to the basement and start bottom to top upwards again. So that's just a little bit of information. If you don't want to view the air, you can do the visibility clip and change it to, to 1 or 0.5 to make it uh, uh, not visualize the air. Okay, so that's just a little aside. Now um, the job to do is you want to export the a, a point for the top and the middle of every one of these cells. So if I just uh, take um, the mouse again onto the current model grid, that means the geology inside of our new um, 3D grid, right click and you see this thing export surface shells. That's going to give you the option of what you want is to make points on top of every uh, little cube. If you go inside here, what you want is CSV, voxel tops. Uh, you make an output destination, uh, and here I've done some testing already to check. 
Uh, so I'm just going to say the place where I want it. Um, test 3 is the next one for you, uh, Dragon, and um, um, say save, so that's just making the place where we're going to put this points file. Um, the query type is equal, so when we say when the we're querying the model and when it's equal to the value of 1 we're going to get uh, the top of uh, the voxels for the unit number 1 which is our pink basement so equal 1 is what you need to say um, let's just say OK now and the file will be created and I'll just pull it up for you in here so test 3 is what I just created um, now if I want to just visualize those points in that, um, I'm going to hide the mesh, so uh, remove all the views of the mesh now. And let's just have a look at what we had um, here. Um, okay, so I'm going to import that and to, to just to visualize it. I could import it to geology, which means um, I'm making it actually part of the geology model, but I'm not going to do that. This is just a file you want to take out to Modflow. So uh, just to show you what, what it did create, I'm going to go into Grids and Meshes, select left mouse, now right click and import. Um, you're importing 2D, 3D observations, select that and then browse back to where we were. Here we are, test 3, dragon, and say open. Um, it goes through a, a wizard, so just say next. You'll see the columns that it's made here. One is the value because it's identifying that it's top of the pink basement. This is just one unit, one formation at a time. Um, this is all fine because you've got the columns parsed. Um, next, so what you need to do here is X treat as X, Y treat as Y, Z treat as Z. Value, you need at least one field. So value is to bring it in and, and keep it identified as the top of basement. Um, so value is just literally going to be called a field. Uh, if you want to say uh, top basement, just give it a name in, in the description and finish. And straight away visualize what you did bring in. Um, so visualize it in 3D. Okay, so there we have our points file for the top of the granite. Um, and I'll just prove to you that that is uh, what we wanted. I'll bring back the smooth geology, which is this one, and show it. So there you are. That's the best estimation. If you want a smoother look, then then the thing to have done right back at the beginning when we created the um, 3D grid with physical properties, this is the one where you do a... Um, we, you remember we made it at 300 meters fixed cell size. If you want a finer discretization and, a, and therefore a finer output of points, you would reduce that from 300 to 200 or 100. Um, gets more memory intensive and the, and the resulting output file will, will be of course bigger because what you've achieved is the center top point of the cell on export. Okay, so we're doing it one unit at a time. Let's now ask for the next unit up. So let's remind ourselves um, what that is. We're going to ask for this one next. So this is the smooth geology model just to, to show us what, what it was. Um, it's called lower cover. And because we had this uh, tag switched on, lower cover is number two. Uh, this, is, this is the number we need to export to next. It's just closing that. I'm going back to current model grid, uh, right click and export surface shells. This time uh, we choose again a place to put it. Let's change that first. Okay, oh, happier now. Right, tutorial and it's seeing the CVS file. Okay, now we give it a name, call it test 4 dragon. save. This time um, again CSV file, this time we choose value 2 uh, because we're going to ask for the top of the blue this time 
and say OK. And it's already exported now. So let's just hide uh, the smooth geology for a minute and import the observations. Test 4, open. Again, the wizard operating through, and this time our value is 2 because it's the next unit up the pile. Uh, next, x import as x, y, y, z, z, and value is a field. And finish, and then we have this new set of points. Value, right click is to visualize it. Okay, and here we have our next lot of points in a s separate file. And I'll just show that back again. And there we have it. So it pick, it's picking up the detail of the surface uh, in a points file. And just to finish off this video about the interoperability between GeoModeler and ModFlow, I need to finish on the GeoModeler side by demonstrating a really important point. So both of these files that we've created um, are independent and they're only provided for the top of the geology unit. So that's fine for the pink basement. It's not fine for the blue co lower cover because for ModFlow you would like to be seeing the entire area right across uh, uh, including the top of pink. So now I will show you how to achieve that for the blue unit within a single file. So first thing I'm going to do is hide the geology and now I'm also going to hide the lower of the two files just so we can be sure. Alright, now this time we're going to um, make a query and extract um, the top of the blue lower cover but also uh, the top of the basement into this corner to create the one file. So how I'm going to do that is uh, take the uh, current model grid. I'm going to ask for our expert export the surface shells. Again, uh, they're voxel tops in a CSV file. Um, this time we're going to ask for something called inside range. So this is inclusive of the numbers in our stratigraphic pile, remembering that we're after basement 1 and the next uh, unit up which is number 2. So this is inclusive. Then we need to browse to the file where we're going to take it to and we call it uh, test12 uh, inside range and say OK. The file's been created now. It's here. And we'll just view it to see. Well, actually, we have to import first. So under grids and meshes, right click, import, import 2D, 3D observations. Browsing to that file. The first step of the wizard uh, enables us to see that the file has been parsed. The second one allows us to treat those x, y, z and the field also needs to be imported. Uh, we can tag it with uh, units 1, 2. Now that it's imported we can visualize but first I'm going to remove the view of the first one. Field Visualization Manager and here we have it. So this has given us exactly what we wanted. It's filled in the corner, uh, it's taken the top of the blue and it's also finished this top here nicely. Everything is complete. So I believe this file will be quite satisfactory for what you need for import through groundwater vistas, 
into ModFlow.